this weather's a little bit interesting, huh? But hey, you know, one thing before I get started, one thing to remember on a day like today especially, you know, coming out and doing relay is so much fun when the weather's awesome and it's sunny and we're, you know, ready to rock. But we need to remember that we got to push through on days like today because when you're a cancer or when you're going through your cancer journey and things get hard and you get tired and you get cold or you get hungry, you have to keep going. You don't have a choice. You can't just stop because the weather's not in your favor, you know? So days like today, we really appreciate you guys coming out and helping us to remember why we're all here. So first of all, um, this is the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life 2016 for uh, Middlefield. So thank you guys for being here. This is Nicole Marker, your event chair this year. Big round of applause for her. She has done an awesome job, and um, this event would not be happening without her. Um, and the rest of our committee as well. So our committee members, go ahead and raise your hands. Big round of applause for our committee members this year. And all of our team captains. Team captains, raise your hand. Teams, let's hear for your team captains. So basically, the American Cancer Society is um, pretty awesome and is able to put on events like this, Relay for Life, which is our largest fundraising event of the American Cancer Society. Your donor dollars from all the things that you're going to do here today, plus all the donations that you have made, your sponsors' commitments, all of that, all that money raised is going to help not only to find a cure for cancer and going toward research, but it's also going to help um, people that are going through cancer now. So just remember that your do dollars are making a difference and we appreciate you guys every single day. So um, without further ado, I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn it over to um, two of our very own cancer survivors, uh, Austin Hunt and Jen Sable. Big round of applause. Okay, before we get started, we have Barrett, who got recruited this morning to come up, and he's going to lead us in a fun roller coaster ride. So get ready. Okay, so y'all, this is a party. And what are we doing to party? Ride roller coasters! Yeah! Okay, everybody, get in your seats, get in your seats now. Let's uh, get some safety harness on, safety first. Alrighty, we're rolling. <laughs> oh! 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 Wow, thank you for taking that roller coaster ride with us. For all of us involved in Relay, we know the roller coaster ride and the ups and downs that cancer takes you on. Thank goodness for the harness and safety belts that we call our faith, family, friends, and coworkers. I was asked to share my story and help Austin kick off this year's Relay. I won't bore you with the history of aches and pains that I had that I seemed to shrug off and think were nothing. I worked full time, I was getting an online degree, and I was running marathons. And I could hang with my husband and brothers, so either I was strong or they were weak. After giving birth to a child, 12 years after my first, almost 12 years, she has it down to the dates, months, and hours, um, I figured it would take a while for this 40-something to bounce back from that. At my postpartum visit, I shared my concerns of a baby that would not sleep and a stomach that was not going down. And my doctor decided to order some tests. 
The next thing I knew, I was at the Cleveland Clinic for a whirlwind of appointments, scans, and biopsies. Hindsight's 2020, right? After my diagnosis, the doctors would ask me questions like, weren't you fatigued? Well, yeah, but I was pregnant. Didn't you have nausea? Well, yeah, but I was pregnant. Didn't you feel that big mass in your abdomen? Well, yeah, but I was pregnant. I thought it was the baby. Well, apparently along with that baby, it turns out I was told I had stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that was an incurable and inoperable. But there was good news. The baby was healthy and the cancer was treatable. I learned very quickly that I had to get over my fear of needles. I was no longer the one in control and I had to let some things go. And that's not really part of my plan. For any of you that know me, I like to have a plan and maybe even a backup plan. And so this was not a part of that at all. I didn't think about the gloves not helping with the page turning. Sorry, it's the only other one. I have to admit I didn't even use the C word for a couple of weeks. After having lost my father to asbestos cancer in 2005 and just finished watching my mom with chemo and radiation for her breast cancer, I had really had enough. Then my head game started. I'm a wife. What about my husband? I'm a mom. What about my kids? I'm a principal. What about my school? And those kids, they're mine too. Every connection to my being became a concern for how this would negatively affect them. But the ironic thing was, all of the people I was so worried about were the ones that were going to carry me through. They carried me through, and by being here at Relay today, you continue to carry me and many others through. Caregivers, family, friends, coworkers, thank you for making a difference. Thank you, thank you for taking that roller coaster ride over and over again. You know those ups and downs. You know that you might puke, you might cry, you might scream. It's not always fun, but you continue to get in line and strap yourself into that seat and take that ride with these cancer survivors over and over again. So thank you for that. Ott. All right. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all excited to relay this year. For those of you here that don't know me, my name is Austin Hunt. I'm a cancer survivor. I've been doing Relay for Life for three years now. I know there are some of you who know me and some of you who don't. I'm going to be speaking a little bit about my journey today. It was four scores and seven years ago. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay. Four years ago, I was just your average 15 year old boy. Enjoying his summer break, hanging out with friends, going to campouts, doing tractor pulls, all the things I loved, of course. I was counting down the days until I, I was 15 and a half so I could get my temps and be one step closer to getting my driver's license. My summer was going well, and like and like all of them as a kid or a teenager, it seemed to be going way too quick. The downhill part of my summer had always been after the 4th of July. The 4th of July is when all my cousins and family get together and have a big camp out. The 4th of July has always been the most memorable camp out. I can recall mostly all of them or at least a memory from each one. The one I will never forget is definitely when I was 15. <clears throat> that unforgettable 4th of July was held at my cousin's house. It had been our regular 4th of July camp out. My cousins and I, riding four wheelers and dirt bikes, were making up games and playing them. And when we weren't doing either of those, we were up by the pool swimming. day of the 4th of July, my aunt always gave me and my other cousins haircuts. It was kind of a tradition that we had. I wanted to got what I got each year, a mohawk. My aunt gave me the haircut, and when she was about done, she noticed that there was a little bump on my head. And then, a little while later, my dad saw it too. And then he showed my stepmom. 
It was thought to it wasn't thought to be much of a concern. It was a small bump, thought to be a cyst or an ingrown hair. So I didn't think much of it neither. It had to be something common. I was 15 years old, it couldn't be anything too serious. A couple weeks came and went, and whatever was on my head was getting bigger. My dad took me to the doctor. He had to be recommended to someone else that could properly remove the bump I had. We made a scheduled appointment for the other doctor. On the day we went there, I had a procedure done where they took the bump off my head. It was supposed to get biopsied. Not too long after I got the bump off my head removed, I started having problems breathing. The changes were very drastic and they happened quickly. The procedure was done on a Wednesday. That same Wednesday we got bad news that my uncle had passed away. He had passed away from pancreatic cancer. We were told his funeral was on a Sunday. My family and I had decided a while ago to go camping at Punderson. We still wanted to go. It was supposed to be a beautiful weekend. I knew camping was going to be a problem. My problems breathing had gotten worse. Thursday night I hadn't slept at all. I couldn't breathe at all when I laid flat. And my chest hurt really bad. If I tried to lay flat, I couldn't. Friday came. My dad and everyone else could tell that something was really wrong. Anything I would do, I just ran out of breath. And at night, I couldn't sleep, and they could hear me struggling to breathe. Saturday came, nothing was better, it was just worse. My chest hurt even worse. I couldn't really do much physical activity or I was out of breath. Sunday came, my family and I went to my uncle's funeral. It was one of the worst days of my life. Not only emotionally, but physically. I could no longer eat, and I could barely walk from point A to point B without being completely out of breath. We got home that night, and I knew something was majorly wrong. I told my dad that we needed to go to the hospital. We went to Hillcrest, and from there, they sent me to the Cleveland Clinic. I went to an ambulance to the Cleveland Clinic. I was scared to death, but at the same time, in an ambulance, wait. At the same time, I thought to myself, wow, this is really cool. I'm in a life or death situation, and this is my first time in an ambulance. Once I was at the Cleveland Clinic, it seemed like I went down miles of halls. I didn't like it. I knew something had to be really wrong, and that's why I was there. The next day and a half, I didn't sleep. All I did was see and talk to doctors and have tests done. The second day I was in the Cleveland Clinic is when I got my life-changing news. Me, my dad, my stepmom had been in the hospital room for hours upon hours. A doctor came into my room and asked my dad and stepmom if they could step out of the room for a minute, so they did. They left me in the room with a really nice nurse that asked how I was doing and feeling. I told her I was doing all right and feeling a bit better. She seemed a little worried but calm. About five minutes into talking to her, I heard the door open. I look over, I see the doctor come in. And then my dad, my stepmom, wasn't coming in the room. I couldn't help but wonder why she wasn't. She had been by my side since I was four. but she wasn't coming in. At that, I knew it had to be bad. Once my dad came in, came in the room, I saw the look on his face. I noticed it looked like he had been crying.
It looked like there were tears in my dad's eyes. His eyes looked like they were filled with fear. <coughs> the man who I believed to be bulletproof. The same guy who taught me how to ride a bike. Who gave me the nickname Ott. Taught me right from wrong. Who busted his back 40 plus hours a week, still made it home every night to tell me, my brother and my sister, good night, and I love you. Same man who I've looked up to every day of my life was now in fear. I was scared of what the doctor had to tell me. For a moment, I wished I could have figured out a way to rewind time. Make this all go away, but that wasn't going to happen. The doctor told me the news. I was devastated. I had a jumble of thoughts run through my head. Like, why me? How did this happen? This can't be true. I sat in the bed for the next couple of days and nothing came to me. No answers. No nothing. I needed so badly to know why me, yet no answers. The third day of having my diagnosis, I sat in the hospital bed. But my dad and stepmom needed to get something to eat. They asked if I wanted to be left alone for a bit. I did really bad. So I said yes. I plugged in my cousin's iPod that she gave me to borrow. I was listening to the playlist on her iPod. A song came on that I had never heard before. I was not afraid by Eminem. As that song played, it felt very soothing. At least part of it did. I knew from that point on, I was going to fight cancer and own my disease. I was going to be the only one in my family that got diagnosed with cancer and beat it. I was going to, going to beat it for them and all my friends. I learned a lot from having this disease. I have a different outlook on life now. you got to enjoy every aspect of your life love every moment. That's it. We started with the ups and downs of a roller coaster and we're going to close with a connection of changes that come with seasons. Who knows what the seasons really are anymore and if you ask my father-in-law they're continuing to change over time. It stays nice well into November. We might have snow on Easter instead of on Christmas. And then all of a sudden, we get a 70 degree weather day. And then that disappears for two months. But that's Ohio, right? We just keep hanging in for all of these changes. And that's what we do. We know that eventually it'll get brighter and better and warmer and sunnier. And that's what we hold on to when it's dark and cold and rainy. We know that we'll come into the light of a new season. One of the most important things that got both of us through was music. I wanted to make sure to share a few of our favorite songs and welcome you to Relay, welcome you to a new season, a season of redemption. We have little cards that show the different seasons just to remind you of the seasons that you go through in this journey. And on the back are a couple of the reminders of the redemption season. You can scan and it'll take it to some really uplifting and encouraging songs. And I think they're gonna get the first one going while we pass these out. And they are inside. 
It's like a 